the Oklahoma Sooners had a massive recruiting weekend, or at least just a huge recruiting weekend, however you want to put it. And it was a weekend that was kind of spurred in the moment, and it's led to a commitment for Oklahoma, maybe an additional silent commitment. There's a lot going on. I think we need to talk about a little bit of it. Jay over at Unfair Sports and I were in a room, in a green screen, room earlier we were discussing it talking about just how impressive this weekend was but being a last minute or what felt like a last minute recruiting weekend to us um, as people just looking on the outside in but before we talk about it before we discuss it guys i need to hear from y'all so make sure you're joining the discussion jumping down in the comments below giving me your thoughts right do you think oklahoma gets any additional commitments out of this weekend Besides the one they got from the four star safety and Marcus Wimberly. And I think that's where you got to start it off, right? For a weekend that originally did not have a name, now it was the Heisman Hangout. And you have to wonder is this going to be a weekend where this is replicated in other years? And in a weekend where you had a list of just a ton of visitors, this was a pretty successful weekend. And guys, I don't know if y'all were paying attention on social media, but something important happened this weekend. And what I mean by what important happened, we had the return of Heisman winners that we haven't seen in Oklahoma in a long time. Sam Bradford. You guys remember him? Quarterback in 2008 that took Oklahoma to that national championship against Florida. He's back on campus. I heard Jason White was on campus this week. This is a big deal because from what I understand, these were guys that did not come around during the Lincoln Riley era. And whether we all know kind of what was going on with Lincoln Riley and former players not really allowing them there or not wanting them there. You had Gerald McCoy there today. Like this was a big weekend for OU football and just being able to get some of these former guys back. And I think you're going to see the effects of having these guys around the program and around weekends like this. You're going to see that. Going through a couple of some of the guys that were on campus, and I'll scroll through some photos here so that you guys can see um, kind of I mean, what was going on during this weekend. Which, by the way, props to Jolie, and I believe it's L for putting this weekend together. I mean, again, this was... This did not seem like a weekend that was initially there. It felt like this was a, hey, like we got a bunch of people coming on campus. Let's get something put together. Uh, and right here, you got a four-star defensive lineman uh, in the 2026 class, I believe, uh, here with Todd Bates and Brent Venables. Uh, I believe he's out of modern day. Uh, this was just an overall important weekend for Oklahoma. There are a couple of guys that I'm really watching to see, like, all right, what happens? Like, does Oklahoma get a commit here? And uh, right here, you'll see David Merritt Sr. And this is the one I think we got to first start with is his son, Dawson Merritt, a uh, four-star linebacker. I believe he's a top 70 or 75 player in the country. Uh, Oklahoma's in a good spot here, guys. Like, Oklahoma could land Dawson Merritt. I believe he's out of Overland Park, Kansas, if I remember correctly. Uh, but Dawson Merritt is a guy that uh, he was supposed to get on campus for some of the other junior days that Oklahoma had. He wasn't able to make those. So like three straight visits that he ended up missing, but he got on campus this week. He has an official visit with Oklahoma currently scheduled. Let me look. I have it right here. Uh, yeah, on party uh, Party at the Palace, I think, is June 21st, or there might be the Champion Barbecue. It's one of those two events, but it's the 21st through the 23rd. That's when he's going to be on campus. Oklahoma sits in a good spot here. This is one where I would be looking to see, like, hey, did Oklahoma close? You also had Malik Hawkins on campus, so potentially you get Malik Hawkins to turn in his chip, right? Finally be committed. You know, we have Malik Hawkins' commitment coming up on April 10th, and this seemingly seems like probably his last hoorah before he ends up committing. So interesting there uh, to get Malik Hawkins on campus. And then you got Kobe Sellers, right? Kobe Sellers, four-star cornerback out of Shadow Creek High School uh, in the Houston area. We've talked about it so often, right? Kobe Sellers, it seems like from the outside, he loves Oklahoma. Talking to sources, talking to uh, Kobe himself. 
I really feel like Oklahoma is the leader in this clubhouse. And, you know, Kobe Sellers is theirs to lose at this point. But I also expect that we're probably going to see Kobe Sellers come, come down the stretch. You saw predictions in favor of C.J. Nixon to end up at Oklahoma, right? How how much longer does that recruitment for the four-star edge rusher, borderline five-star edge rusher out of Weatherford, Oklahoma, how much longer does that recruitment actually last? I think that's something that we've all got to watch. Uh, and then you look at guys like Marion Robinson. Um, I would really like to see that one wrap up quickly. And as we talked about in the Marcus Wimberly video, if you get – a Marion Robinson to commit. I think that kind of really tells you where the staff is at with Jonah Williams. And with the report today, some Texas folks are trying to tell you that Texas is the leader in the clubhouse for Jonah Williams. I don't believe that for a second, especially since they were the ones that had caused the whole hoopla about Jonah Williams going to Oklahoma and kind of ruining that surprise. Uh, but another guy that was on campus today that I expect at this point, I'm like, hey, he might be a part of the class. That's Emmanuel Choice. Emmanuel Choice is a four-star wide receiver out of Lancaster, Texas. 6'4", 190 pounds. He's got offers, elite offers from all the teams across the country. USC, Texas, Tennessee, Florida, A&M, TCU, Utah, uh, Houston, Colorado, Oklahoma State, Ole Miss, right? You catch my drift. There are teams across the country that want him. He was on campus again. I know that Oklahoma was one of the first bigger offers or maybe even like the first offer that he got. I really like where Oklahoma sits in that recruitment. And I would imagine you look at some of the last wide receivers in this class that could potentially commit in the wake of Nickens decommitting from this class. I look at choice and I was talking to Jay about over in unfair sports about this earlier. I said, I could see a world where, Oklahoma only takes choice, and then the last spot is left for Caleb Cunningham if he wants to come, but then they use that one other spot somewhere else on the team, like maybe a defensive line, right? Because we've all said it. You get Trent Wilson, if you get Cole Brailer, what if Floyd Bucard wants to come? Well, maybe you've just found a spot for Floyd Bucard because you can take that spot from the wide receiver room and give it to Floyd. So things like that, I think, will end up being worked out. It's just the nitty litty, uh, the nitty gritty details. I know some people are high on Marsh. I'm not sold on that. And I'm not sold on it because I think he's just going to Texas. I think the problem is the room is so deep. I think Marsh... I, I, I don't want to say he gets lost in the depth chart, but I think if he ends up here at Oklahoma, I think he sees the opportunity for him to potentially get lost, right? So uh, I'm not I'm not sold on Andrew Marsh to Oklahoma just yet. I know some people are high on that one. Maybe I need to, need to do some more digging, but I'm, I'm not sold there yet. So that's kind of what I'm feeling um, after the early, early presentation of Heisman Hangout. A really important weekend put on uh, by Jolie Allo. Uh, again, I, I guys... She was a home run hire. I mean, I, I think Jay and I were sitting there talking about that home run hire for you to be able to go out there and land somebody like her and for her to be able to go and put a weekend on like this in seemingly what was last minute. I felt like this was big time and I felt like this is going to be big for the program and we're going to see a lot come out of this weekend here in the future. So guys, before we go, make sure you hit that like, hit the subscribe button. Remember we're on pace to try to hit 8,000 subs by the end of this month going into May. So I want you guys to be a part of the channel. I want you guys to be part of the community here. Hey, and jump down in the comments below and give me your thoughts. Who do you think might commit out of this weekend? Uh, this is a big weekend. Um, also, another guy you can potentially see to commit is Christian Evans, three-star defensive lineman as well. Uh, but I do kind of wonder how committable that offer is. We'll have him here on the podcast soon to talk about his recruitment this weekend for Oklahoma. So make sure you guys are tuned in there. Uh, but hey, YouTube wants you guys to watch one of these two videos. So make sure you guys are tuning into those as well.